Okay, so I think that we are ready to start. I am really happy that I can introduce you Olga. Olga, I know her for four years or more. Uh, Olga is working right now as a senior data scientist in Epsilon. She is also a co-organizer of Warsaw R user uh, group. You know, there is more than 1,800 users signed on Meetup, so it's a large group, really large. Uh, she also co-organizes our ladies, so you know, free contributions already. And today, she is going to talk about four, or maybe even more, packages for Shiny. We are all using Shiny, so it's very good that uh, she will tell us about some new things that can be added to our packages, to our applications. So yeah, let's welcome her. Uh, thank you very much for introduction. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, as uh, Premek uh, said actually quite uh, accurately, I'm not gonna talk about four new packages, but six new packages, uh, since this talk kind of evolved uh, when I was uh, working uh, on it. Mm. So uh, this is gonna be rather a sneak peek uh, for uh, each of the package, but uh, I will tell why uh, we created them uh, why they are actually useful for you and how your work can uh, benefit uh, from them. And uh, I will do from demos, a uh, few demos uh, as well. Um, so I was planning to introduce myself, but let's not waste the precious time. Um, uh, I think uh, Przemek did a great work here. I just want to add that uh, I use R uh, on a daily basis at work. And what makes me feel uh, pretty good about it is that there's almost uh, a package for every problem you have. So uh, you're doing, uh, you're building an ML model. Uh, there are thousands, uh, maybe not thousands, but uh, many packages to do so, plotting, and so on. Um, and this is thanks to the great um, community. And uh, it makes me feel uh, that we all stand uh, on the shoulder of the giants because we can use the legacy of others uh, when uh, when uh, starting our own uh, work. But uh, obviously, uh, there isn't package for everything in R, and uh, this creates an opportunity for individuals uh, and companies uh, to contribute and somehow. Uh, Payback, uh, because we we had uh, easier at the beginning. It was easier for us uh, to start. For uh, so usually, what um, how we approach the uh, problems at uh, Epsilon is that if there is a problem uh, that we have to develop our own solution, we try to uh, wrap it as a package and make it uh, available to others. So uh, and since we do a lot of uh, work around Shiny. Um, we mainly open sourced uh, Shiny packages, so and hoping to uh, make Shiny uh, shi shine brighter. Um, so today I'm gonna cover uh, three uh, aspects. So uh, the packages that uh, helps you uh, build a nicer UI, improve the functionality, and uh, manage users. So let's start with uh, the UI. And the first package uh, I'm going to talk about has uh, already uh, proven itself uh, in a battle. It's uh, been around uh, for quite uh, some time, and uh, it's uh, shiny semantic. It's uh, available both on uh, CRN and, and GitHub. And it's a package um, for that allows you to use semantic UI uh, components uh, within R. Um, and it's an alternative to a currently available Bootstrap and Shiny, and both uh, Bootstrap and Semantic UI are front-end uh, component uh, libraries containing uh, HTML and uh, CS CSS frameworks uh, for, um, for the UI components like uh, buttons, forms, uh, and so on. And uh, Shiny Semantic uh, package is basically a, a DSL, so domain specific language, which uh, uh, is wrapping the HTML tags. And um, 
It allows you to uh, download and uh, import the CSS, uh, semantic UI CSS classes uh, uh, in R. Mm, it's enabling the user uh, to define uh, shiny inputs and shiny text inputs. Uh, uh, so it's pretty flexible. You can, uh, you can create uh, your uh, own custom elements. And, uh, but it also creates some predefined, uh, more complex elements, uh, like um, uh, this uh, small demo. So it contains, for example, the multiple uh, selection search uh, dropdown and the search field, and uh, both of them are uh, optimized and allow you to um, uh, to use the ser uh, so they allow you to use the server side uh, API, uh, making them really fast. So if you know select ties uh, from Shiny, uh, they uh, they allow for uh, more or less similar performance. And if you're uh, uh, curious about more, uh, we have a demo page uh, displaying them. Uh, so um, if you haven't seen the uh, Shiny Semantic um, app, basically this is an example. Uh, there is a, a menu on the top. What's, uh, we have the content organized in the raised containers. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the, the view is uh, very bad here, but <laughs> you need to believe me that uh, there is a label for each container containing the uh, title uh, for every section. Uh, those yellow points are actually uh, the stars, so the rating components, and uh, in the middle uh, we have example of cards. Mm. So basically, uh, Shiny Semantic allows you to deliver results on the, at the same pace as using Shiny, so there is uh, um, no overhead here, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which could be a perk that uh, uh, it has a sleek, nice, modern look, so you may want to skip the graphic designer uh, in the process, and it's uh, fully customizable. Uh, it's easy to define your uh, own uh, shiny inputs. And uh, if we are talking about the uh, uh, semantic UI, I want to talk about the new kit uh, on the block, so the semantic dashboard. And uh, this is a, a very uh, new package, but it's already available uh, both on GitHub and CRN. And uh, basically, uh, this is a, uh, it allows you to create uh, semantic UI uh, dashboards. So if you already have a shiny dashboard, uh, it's the drop-in replacement for most of the cases. So just uh, you need to change the shiny dashboard to uh, a semantic point uh, dashboard, and it should uh, work. Unless you are doing something uh, uh, custom, then probably you need to adjust uh, in a few more places. And what's pretty cool about uh, Shiny dashboards is that just with a, a really uh, small um, uh, add-in, you can change uh, themes between the apps. So if you just add a theme argument, to your dashboard page and the name of the theme, uh, the theme of the app uh, will change. And let's um, let's do a small demo. So uh, this is the shiny. Mm, it's a pretty simple uh, shiny dashboard. Let me run it. We all see how it looks, or maybe not because the <laughs> view is pretty bad. Uh, and now, uh, let me change it to uh, semantic dashboard. And uh, just like that, uh, I've changed the UI of the dashboard, and now uh, it's using the uh, semantic UI. Uh, and now I will just add the uh, change the theme. So uh, I'm adding theme to the dashboard page, I will use the Cosmo theme. Ta-da! The theme has been changed. Um, so this is uh, this is pretty easy. So both uh, Shiny Semantic and uh, uh, Semantic Dashboard uh, uh, aim to help you uh, create a nicer UI uh, with Shiny. And now let's uh, talk about the functionality. 
So the first uh, package in this block is the uh, Shiny router, and uh, it's actually the community uh, favorite. We received the most uh, contribution uh, from you guys for this package. It's currently only on uh, GitHub, and it's, make, it's making routing possible with Shiny. And what it also does, it's, um, it's possible to use the, uh, to pass URL parameters uh, to your app. So basically, uh, you have the URL, uh, there's an example, and uh, you, can, uh, you can, using the get query function, uh, get query param function, uh, uh, access the query parameter from the URL uh, within your app. Um, let, me, let me show you uh, how it works. So um, here I have pretty simple um, application. First, I create a menu. It will have the, this app will have uh, two pages: the main page and the other page. Uh, so I create the menu to be able to switch uh, between the pages. Uh, I have the page function that creates the layout for um, every page. It's very simple. It's only the menu, title, and the content. And uh, I will have my home page and uh, some other page. And uh, this is the important part. So I'm creating the uh, routing using the make router function. I will route between the main and uh, the other page. And uh, uh, what we need to do in the UI is basically create the output uh, for your router using the route UI function. Uh, uh, this is just the, the, some other content. And uh, what's also important for the router, uh, on the server side, uh, you have to plug in the router, and uh, it's done uh, over here. Mm. And uh, using the get query param uh, function, I will access uh, the parameters from the app. So uh, let's do the demo. This is very basic uh, page, uh, and uh, I will uh, show you how the router wor works. So I will now go to the other page. Uh, so we see that it changed because I was at the home page. Now that I'm uh, some other page, so the other um, the other page, and uh, uh, let me show you how you can access the parameters. So this is a plotly chart uh, for the iris data, which is colored uh, based. Uh, on the three uh, species. So uh, now what I'm doing, I'm providing the query. So a uh, question mark uh, and then x equals Satosa, so the uh, one of the uh, species. I press enter and uh, uh, the Shiny app is reading the uh, parameter. Actually, it's printing it here, but obviously you can't see this, but uh, uh, I hope you all can see the, the chart um, updated. So this is uh, basically how you can use the uh, routing uh, in, in R and in Shiny. Mm. And uh, now internationalization. Uh, here in Europe, uh, it's pretty popular it, that uh, your app or your report uh, needs to be translated to many languages. And you can do it pretty easily with the uh, i18 uh, and package. Uh, it's uh, inspired by the Ruby framework, and it basically helps you translate uh, your Shiny uh, applications too many languages. Um, I know that the time is running, but let's do the, uh, another small demo. Mm. So I have the translations done in the CSV. You can provide them both in the CSV and the JSON. And uh, I'm loading here the translations from the CSV. Um, I will set this to English. Uh, and uh, the translation is done using the C function over here. Here's the example. Let's run the app. So uh, from the Hello Shiny, uh, you can see that the uh, app is in English. Uh, let me maybe make it bigger. 
Okay, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in English, and now let me uh, translate it to Hungarian. So just like this, uh, uh, now the whole app uh, is translated uh, to Hungarian. So um, this works. Uh, it's pretty simple concept, uh, but uh, powerful. Uh, so now managing users, I think all of us can imagine the case where uh, you, uh, you need to provide different access to different users. So uh, someone uh, can have the write access and the other only the read access. And obviously, you also want to know what the users uh, are doing. So uh, we also offer packages uh, for that. Mm. So first, the uh, uh, shiny users. And this uh, uh, this package is, uh, uh, it has been uh, it is an open source that's dedicated uh, only for our clients uh, and basically it allows you to do the authentication and it's uh, the authentication is done fully uh, it's done on the shiny site mm. and you can define different uh, level access uh, for different users and it gives you a possibility also to integrate with some external um, uh, external uh, services to do the authentication. Uh, and here's the demo. Uh, this is the wrong user, so it won't let the user in. And now the, the, the right one signs in, and uh, the user can use the application. And uh, the second package, which we call the uh, Shiny User Sibling, is the Shiny Admin. So we already have different uh, users for our application, and uh, the use case is that we want to collect the statistics, so we want to know how the users are adapting the application, because maybe we build an application that no one is uh, using, so <laughs> basically it sucks. So we can uh, collect information about the session dura duration, about the uh, inputs that people were um, inserting what they clicked, we can monitor the activity of a certain user, and uh, it's really flexible, and it gives uh, the developers uh, the possibility to define uh, the inputs that they want to track, uh, and also the package uh, provides the user uh, management. And uh, this is the screenshot uh, from the admin panel. Uh, we have statistics, the general statistics, the activity stats, and the user-specific ones. And uh, here on the, in the first charts, there are uh, returning sessions, the, 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 uh, the number of the returning sessions, and the new sessions. And the other plot uh, shows how long uh, over the day the user was uh, using the application. So uh, wrapping up. Uh, I know that this was only this was very quick, and this is just a sneak peek. But uh, I hope uh, I just wanted to inspire you, and I'm gonna be here two more days, so um, I'm happy to to talk and show you more. Um, everything that is open source, it's uh, on our GitHub, and we are uh, we would be super happy to receive contributions from you. So take it for a test drive, open a PR, um, add an example or maybe create a hex stickers because we don't have them yet. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that it's a kind of record to show six packages in uh, 18 minutes. So fortunately, we have two minutes for questions. So who is going to start? I think it needs to reload, but you need to, but you can like do it uh, on the, uh, like a trigger this on the uh, shiny side. So basically, uh, what we did so far is we uh, we set the language as a system uh, environment variable, and when we initialize the app, it's already it already has the language, but uh, it needs the trigger to refresh. Uh, 
Other questions? Yeah. This semantic uh, dashboard, is it have like completely the same functionality as uh, standard shiny dashboard? I know that there are still some kind of the improvements. I think one was like playing with the session, restart sessions, is this also play, working well for the semantic dashboard? So basically, um, we tried to uh, develop the semantic dashboard uh, as a copy of uh, shiny, uh, shiny dashboard. So that would be possible for uh, people to easily switch uh, between those two. OK, so last question. Uh, when we use that uh, shiny semantic dashboard and we load that library, so it overlaps the old one uh, shining dashboard. And my question is, uh, does it change the structure and uh, DOM elements? Because in, when we use uh, our Selenium, we don't want to change the selector path. Unfortunately, uh, I, I don't know this. I need to, uh, I need to check with my colleagues, but uh, I can... Uh, get back to you. Thank you very much. As you heard, I'll go with you for two more days. So yeah, ask her about anything after. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.